OpenAI has just released the ChatGPT desktop app and we're going to go over everything you need to know on how to leverage it. First, we'll go over how to even download the ChatGPT app. Next, we'll go over specific features that can only be found within this version and overall get a comprehensive idea of what this app can even do for us. Let's jump in. Welcome back, y'all. In today's video, we're going to be learning how to use the ChatGPT desktop app. I went ahead and did a video earlier this week showing you how to download it. I'm going to show you real quickly how to download it on this video as well. I got a lot of feedback from this video saying that's not the real link. Well, guess what? It was the real link. So let's just go ahead and clear the air there. But let's jump into today's video and download the ChatGPT desktop app through the UI found on ChatGPT.com. And yes, I am saying ChatGPT a lot. ChatGPT, 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 ChatGPT. To download the app, all you need to do is come up to your profile, click download the macOS app. Once you click that, you're going to install in DMG. Now I've already installed it, but all you need to do is simply double click it. Once you double click, you're going to simply drag it into your applications folder and you can launch the app. Now, if you're running into issues on launching the app, signing in and everything above the board there, check out that video I did right there. See if it can help you troubleshoot it. Well, let's go to learn everything we can do with the desktop app as of now. I'm gonna go ahead and double click. When we launch the app, it's gonna come up into a little pop-up like this. We can either expand like this or just simply come up here and drag it by the corner. With the desktop app, we have a pretty cool feature here. We can chat with the voice. So I'm gonna simply hit choose, choose a voice. Hey, it's great to meet you. I'm really looking forward to working on some cool stuff together. That was really loud. Let me turn this down, y'all. To enable voice, all we did was come to these headphones here, got prompted, and we can choose between Cove, Juniper, Breeze, and Ember. Let's see which one sounds best. All right, let's go. First off, Cove. Hi there. I just want to share how thrilled I am to work with you, and I can't wait to get started. So what's okay. the game plan? Juniper. Hey there. I've got a really great feeling about us teaming up. How can I jump in and help? Please. Hey, it's great to meet you. How's your day going? I'm really looking forward to working on some cool stuff together. And Ember. Hey, I'm ready to hit the ground running. So if there's anything you'd like me to focus on first, just let me know. So as of now, we have four different choices. I assume in the future, you'll probably be able to put your own voice as well. We're gonna hey go there, ahead and choose Juniper I've got a really great feeling Ember. about us. We're going to say allow. And now it has the ability to talk to it. Okay, hello. What's up, ChatGBT? Hello, I'm here and ready to help. What's on your mind today? What's the weather like in San Francisco right now? Okay, so it seems to make a sound when it's doing web browsing, I think. The current weather in San Francisco is mostly cloudy with a temperature of around 59 degrees Fahrenheit. It's expected to reach a high of 61 degrees today with west winds blowing at 8 to 15 miles per hour and gusts Let's up see to 24 miles per hour. Let's see if get like status Tonight, confirmation. The temp hey, Chad GBT, what is the date today? Today is May 24th, 2024. All right, perfect. Is, what are your abilities? Can we do web browsing with you? Can we do data analysis? Can we do image generation? I can help with a variety of tasks. Yes, I can do web browsing to find up-to-date information, perform data analysis, and assist with image generation. If you have any specific task okay, in stop mind- stop it. We can go like that and kind of just jump out of this chat. So right now, this doesn't seem like the completely updated version of what we saw in the demo. If you're familiar with that, that had less latency, so less like thinking was incurring, but we do have the voice feature that seems to be what we had access to for like the last couple of months. When they push out an update though, I do plan on doing a video on this new feature with the latency and being able to talk to it like very, very fast. So make sure to subscribe and check that out. Let's see what other features we can do within the desktop app. Everything seems pretty standard here to what we saw the online version. We have the ability to choose between the different models here, choose our personal GBTs here. Furthermore, actually explore the GBT store itself just with a new user interface. So scrolling down here, I can go ahead and check out different types of GBTs that may be relevant to me. Coming up here, we can go ahead and simply just click one of the GBTs and we're good to go. But let's go ahead and check out probably the major feature here of why you would even get the desktop app, which is the ability to shorthand chat GBT within your workflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and exit here. In order to access this very unique feature that we don't see within the online version, we're gonna hit option space. To enable this option, all we need to do within our computer is hit option space. Once we click that, we can just ask a question on the go. We don't have to launch the app. We don't have to go to the website. We can say, what is the best place to eat in Dallas, Texas? Hit enter here, and then it will pop us over to the ChatGPT UI. And if anyone is in Dallas, Texas, those are some options. Probably not the best place, but could be good. Now, if we want to actually see where the source comes from, it's the same way we do it with the traditional UI. We're going to simply click one of these buttons. That's going to go ahead and open up the link that was relevant for where it sourced that information from our initial inquiry. Now, let's go ahead and go over one of the major features that really differentiates the desktop app between ChatGPT.com, which is probably the only reason you'd probably install the ChatGPT app as of now. Obviously, when more updates come out, the latency gets better and everything above the board happens. You'll probably install it for other perks, but this is probably the big reason why you'd install it now. 
And that has to do with the fact of the attachment feature and more specifically our ability to take screenshots. So uploading a file or uploading a photo, that's pretty standard stuff. We can do that within the .com version. Again, a screenshot though is not similar as this is a unique feature to the desktop app. When taking a screenshot, we have the options of already currently open applications. So for example, I could have a VS code there as well. Obviously the only applications I have personally open right now is OBS and Spotify. Let's go ahead and try this out with an entire screen. Now in order for it to even take a screenshot, it's going to have to have access to your screen. So we're going to hit continue here. Simply hit the open system settings here, enable it in your system settings on your Mac and then quit and reopen. Once we've relaunched it, let's go ahead and try this again. To best showcase this feature, let's go ahead and start with the first option when it comes to screenshots, which is by application. So you take screenshot, Spotify premium, then it'll instantly take the relevant, you know, whatever's happening on that application and send it to ChatGPT. So I can go and ask, who is this artist? And if you don't know who this is, this is Swedish House Mafia. And if you don't know who Swedish House Mafia is, you can check it out. It's like one of my favorite artists to listen to when I'm coding. And as you see, it was able to read that screenshot, give us the relevant information here and tell us that was Swedish House Mafia. And to see what it's even looking at, we can simply double click the image and boom, that's what I was looking at. I see this more relevant in the context of if you're coding a VS code, you wanted to take a picture of a file. Alternatively, you could always just copy the code as well. And the other option here is to simply take an entire screenshot of every single monitor you have. So if you have four monitors, it's going to take a screenshot, of all of them, if you have three, all of them. So it's not just one specific monitor. It will do everything. Or if you just have one, it'll just an entire screenshot of that single monitor that you have. As of now, that seems like the most we can do with the chat GPT app. This isn't what we saw in the live stream demo where we saw the live recording, the communication between ChatGPT and yourself so you can actually get live answers while recording your screen, almost like a tech support type of situation. Because of out of everything we saw within that live demo, I think that was the coolest part, right? The ability to actually talk to it no latency, screen record. So it's almost like having a tech support person or whatever context you would want to use ChatGPT in on your actual machine. That was the coolest part. So when that does get released, I'll make sure to make a video, leave a like, it's completely free. I'm gonna leave a playlist at the end here. You may or may not like, I'll see you in the next video. This playlist right here goes over everything we should be knowing about ChatGPT in the last couple of weeks. Go and check it out. That's a random video based off your clicks. I'm live streaming this Sunday. Come and join. That's my face. I'll see you in the next video.